Hello, um, welcome back to Gradient Descent tutorial. Uh, this is part three of the video series. My name is Che from Northeastern University. So, um, well, in this video, we will use Gradient Descent uh, to solve a more realistic problem. In the past videos, we've gone through the algorithm and now we are going to use it. So um, let's give in some data. Okay, here's some data. And uh, you can see the red dots here. These are the data. And our goal is to find the best fit line. Like this green line here is our goal. We want to find a green line. And uh, the equation for a line looks something like this. You have, you know, some slope times x plus beta. And you get some y result from the line. And essentially, all we want to find is the alpha and the beta value. Once we have the alpha and the beta value, we have the equation for the line. Now, first, we need to define this thing called an error. Error. Well, the error is the difference between the data and the line, right? So we have, we have the data here. These are the data. And here's the line. And invariably, it's going to have some difference right and we call that difference an error and the error is basically y1 of the line right minus y1 which is here and then y2 of the line which is here minus y2 so this is e2 and so on and so on and so forth that's e1 e2 e3 so on and so forth so that's error and in this case, like, if you have this magic eight ball, it will tell you that the error for one uh, is zero, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5. So if we want to look at like, okay, we got these errors, but what is the total error? Total error. We want to look at the total error. What makes sense is to sum them up. But if we sum them up, Notice that 0 0.5 and 0, minus 0 0.5, they cancel each other out, and therefore the error is zero. Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense because the error is obviously not zero. Obviously not zero. But E2 and E3 cancel each other out because there's a negative value here. So what we want to do is instead of using just summing up the errors, we want to sum up error square. So square like this. When you square something, it's always positive. And therefore, we define this. This is just something we make up, right? There's this thing called the error. And we're just making it up. And we call it error as the sum of the individual error square. And in this case, if we sum them up, it's 0 0.5. OK? So this is the minimum error. Well, the equation for error, like I said, is from the line, subtract from the data. Y2 from the line, subtract Y2 from the data, so on and so forth. So this part is the line, and this part is the data. And we want to see how far apart they are. And as I mentioned, that the equation for a line is here, right? You have alpha and beta. So we plug this in. So we have x1. Uh, so this is the y1 line, y2 line, y3, y4. I just plug this into each one of these. Now, if I do that, I can rewrite this, the total error. Okay, this is just algebra. Total error is the summation of all of them, right? Square, square, oops, square. And now I, I put this in. Well, error i is just this formula here, which came from here. Once we've done that, I make sure I put the square, and therefore the total error can now be written like this, this formula here. Okay, so that's the total error. And um, in line fitting, we want to find 
a line that the air is as small as possible. Obviously, we want the line so that it's very close to all the dots simultaneously, right? So we want the error to be as small as possible. And now we can basically set this problem up as an optimization gradient descent. And it goes something like this. We want to find the alpha and the beta that minimizes the total error. Now let me say that again. We want to minimize the alpha. Well, sorry, we want to find the alpha and the beta that minimizes the total error. Okay. Now the rest is pretty simple. We remember from gradient descent where we use the previous alpha and beta, which we have to make an initial guess. We can just guess. The initial guess could be like one, one. It doesn't matter. Well, it does. You don't want something too far off, but you just guess something initially. That's reasonable. Um, and then you find a derivative with respect to alpha and derivative with respect to beta. So. Finding a derivative of this with respect to alpha is pretty easy. You basically get this from calculus. You take two, you move it down, which is the two here, and you take the derivative of this with respect to alpha, which just gives you xi. Again, you do this for beta as well, right? You move the two down, two, here's the two, and then you take derivative with respect to beta, which right here is just equal to 1. So now we have this, alpha and beta, and the rest is basically just cranking through the math. Once you have the derivative, you can now solve for gradient descent. Now, what I did is I wrote um, a piece of software that essentially did this, and I got this result. The real solution alpha and beta is 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Gradient descent gave me 0 0.49 and 0 0.5, which I will say is a pretty good estimation. Good estimation. And you can see from this graph here that all the gray lines, you see these gray lines, they're little by little, they're inching towards the final solution, which is the blue line, the blue line here is the is actual solution. And look at how the blue line fits the red dots really, really well. Okay, so so yeah, this is an example of doing gradient descent. And um, and as you can see, once you solved it, you can basically formulate any problem into this thing, which we had, like this is called a cost function. And we want to minimize the cost. The cost in this case is the error. So in any problem in, in life, actually, if you can, you can like formulate the cost function, you can essentially then find the perimeters um, of the cost function and minimize it using gradient descent. And uh, that's, that's a, I guess, um, a very good example to go through. Um, I think we will have one more video next. I will see you later. Bye-bye.